What's up, everybody? This is episode one of Between Two Coins, an old show come back, brand new style. The reason we're a little bit laid back is originally this was only meant for Spotify, and I think I say it right at the beginning of the video, but we enjoyed our conversation so much that we decided we wanted to go ahead and be on YouTube for all of you guys. So please enjoy and get ready because it's about to be some great Saturdays coming your way. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Between Two Coins. We are on Spotify. This is where you're listening to this right now. And I, I want to tell you, I'm excited about this show because while I'm the host, I have potentially the third greatest host in the entire world co-hosting, and his name is Smainold. Well, what does third greatest mean? Listen, I think the number one has to be, uh, I don't even know if I know who number one and number two are. I just know you're number three. So, well, that's just obnoxious and rude, and it the um, polls showed it. What polls? I, I don't want to disclose those. Anyway, this show, just in case you guys are wondering, is actually a rebrand. We've done this show before; it was on YouTube, but this one is on Spotify. And uh, you know, this is what I said the other day on Twitter when I announced we were doing this. Uh, this is the different show with the same old goobers. And uh, the purpose, just in case you're wondering, because this is the very first episode, we will be discussing crypto every single week on this show. This is Between Two Coins. We will talk crypto, but we're going to talk sports. We're going to talk working out. We'll talk animals, because Smay loves him some turtles and lizards and frogs, and we'll find out what's happening in the animal kingdom every single week. Uh, we There's really no telling where conversations could go. This is definitely a kickback with Tim and Smay. Anything's possible, and anything could happen. What do you think about that, Smay? I think that anything is possible, anything can happen. What type of people would you recommend uh, are, should be listening? Because I'm sure a lot of people might be tuning off right now, and that's okay. Well, I understand. Specifically, I think the people that need to watch this, uh, if you have legs. Yes. If you have legs that have hair on them. And even if you don't if you have, have legs, because uh, some uh, people uh, don't have legs. I'm not done. If you have arms. And arms that may or may not have hair on them. If you have a face, and your face may or may not have hair on it. Mm. If you have a pet, or you may not have a pet dog. If you may or may not have a pet cat. If you wear glasses, or you also have good eyesight. If you, your favorite restaurant is McDonald's, or your favorite restaurant is Arby's. Or if your favorite restaurant is Popeye's. Or if your favorite animal is a zebra. Or if your favorite animal is a giraffe. Are you waiting for me to cut you off at I, this point? I think, that, I think you are. I think That's that good you, enough. You should watch this show. Yes. I think if your favorite coin is Dogecoin. I think if your favorite coin is Bitcoin. Yeah. I think if your favorite coin is our Cardano. If your favorite coin is Polkadot. I think you should also yes. be a viewer of this program. There is, there is only one type of person, though, that should not be watching this show. And who's that, Tim? Those are people that, that enjoy eating pineapple pizza. I even say you may or may not like pineapple pizza, but I think you can also, in some way or another form, support this program. You can Thank support you. it, but I don't know if you should watch it because you can't watch Spotify, can you? No, you can't. Just got out thunk to there. Well, anyway, you know, we're going we're gonna to dive in. Like I said, this is the first episode ever. So in the future, we will definitely have the likes of Michael Saylor on this show. I haven't set it up. I just, we're going to have him. We'll get Charles Hoskinson on the show, some big boys. We'll get, you know what, I even right now, you heard it here first. We're going to get Elon Musk on this show. Uh, we'll get Shannon, the marketing man, on this show. Uh, we'll get Jeb on the show. We'll get uh, T-Shroom and Kelly on the show. And maybe even Zach. That's the special one. Zach, the editor, definitely not high Zach, will most likely be on the show at some point. In the future, but what I want to do for today, I want to just you know, in, in case anyone is listening and you don't know who we are, because we are on the the Crypto Jeb team over on YouTube. Make sure to go check us out every single morning, Monday through Friday, on Coffee and Crypto Live, and occasionally when Jeb is out, you get to see me on an afternoon video as well. But, Smay, what is your history of crypto? When when did you get in? What got you into the world of crypto? And and tell me a little about your journey. Well, I started younger than most. Uh, I was a young whippersnapper. Uh, when I heard of first of Bitcoin, when I used to sit and play Club Penguin, which, by the way, is a Disney property, which, by the way, could possibly mean that that Club Penguin 
uh, in some way got Disney involved in Bitcoin and they've been hiding it. But that is a conversation for another day. What are the well, chances that the CEO of Disney is Satoshi Nakamoto? Very low, to be honest with you. They okay. changed. They just recently changed CEOs, so I think that. What guy, about the old one then? Very, very unlikely, okay. I'll say. Um, gotcha. But he was a very good uh, in terms of growing Disney. He was really good. He bought. Uh, anyways, uh, I would like to say that my story began long ago. Yeah. And it's when it when I played Club Penguin, and I bought. I didn't buy Bitcoin, but I saw that you could have the option to pay for your membership in Bitcoin. Mm. And by the way, means that I'm pretty sure because Club Penguin is a Disney property, and so I'm pretty sure <laughs> that we're gonna talk about that. Disney might actually own Bitcoin. That's an interesting thing to think about. But anyways, yeah. my story starts a long time ago Gosh. when I was <laughs> when <laughs> I when it was in the land of 2020 during the pandemic. There we go. I got a year out of you. And uh, I I bought Dogecoin on Robinhood. And I didn't know much about it. I just saw it on TikTok. And I held that for until I doubled it. So I turned $5 into $10. And it was the greatest wow. investment I had ever made at that point in my life. That's a good investment. Um, but later on, it turns out I could have made a lot more money than that. Uh, that's, that's true. Sad. If, you, um, if you had left that $5 in Dogecoin, do you know what it would be worth right now? I don't know. I think it would be a couple thousand, though. Wow. I think. I think. Uh, anyways, that's a rough. Uh, I also an, a good thing. Uh, anyways, I got the job here. I started to I started out as a researcher, and that I that was kind of where I dove really deep into learning about cryptocurrencies and and Bitcoin and such. And then, fun story. Did you lie on your resume? You I did. I didn't. Okay, because first of all, I didn't even okay. have a resume. <laughs> I never. <laughs> that's true. I never submitted a resume. I was just a, a good reference. But the person who... But we were told that you were a crypto expert. Which I also never claimed to be. Like, I, know, I didn't even you didn't say. Lie. I didn't lie. You didn't I, lie. But I... Because I wanted the job to be the video guy, but they weren't hiring for a video guy. Yeah. Uh, which, funny enough, I ended up getting my way in being the video guy. You bullied your way but, in there. But, uh, yeah, the, ultimately... Uh, Anyways, that's a little bit off track, but I didn't really know about crypto, but I got the job anyways, and I learned, I forced myself to learn. I spent like all night the day before my interview learning about cryptocurrencies and yeah. and all that stuff, and I got by, uh, fair enough to say that I got by, um, but anyways, that's my history. That's your story. That's my story. Mm. Pretty, it's pretty hard to follow, I'm sure, but I- Seems uh, like a lot of things repeated during it. So actually, there's a fun fact. So a good part, a good thing that I, I I forgot to mention. So when I first heard about Bitcoin, I was actually it was because I saw it was a way that you could pay for your Club Penguin membership. Okay, That's and a nice. uh, fun fact: D Club You're Penguin is a off. Disney property. You're being and, cut off. Uh, that means that Disney could possibly Gosh. own Bitcoin. That's an interesting thing. We won't get into it today, but we'll get into it in another. You story, know, the downside uh, about show. cutting off Smay is he's controlling the audio, so there's no way of doing that. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway, I'll tell you, I'll tell my story. My story is I was an old whippersnapper as a, opposed to the young uh, version of Smay. You know, I actually heard about Bitcoin many, many years ago when I was dating my wife right now, Taylor. We were dating. She was in a, a sorority at University of Florida and a, a, one of her like uh, sorority sisters uh, had a boyfriend and I was talking with him one night. He's like, dude, you got to buy Bitcoin, man. At the end of the Bible, when it talks about the one world currency, that is Bitcoin, man. And it's going to be the end of the world. So you got to get in right now, man. And, and you know what's funny is I think Bitcoin at the time was sitting darn near close to like $600 per coin. But I stand by my decision not to get into that point because uh, just hearing one person's conspiracy theory future of Bitcoin. Uh, he also, just so you guys know, went on to become a weed farmer. So that tells you. Uh, I, I actually know it's a profitable business. Maybe he's the most smart guy that I give him credit for. But I did hear about Bitcoin way before I actually got invested. Uh, but I, I, again, I stand by making wise decisions. Don't don't invest based off of conspiracy theorists. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, fast forward. I was actually, believe it or not, I was Jeb's uh, personal trainer at one point. Got to spend a lot of time with old Jebel. And we talked about many a thing whilst he was benching and squatting and pulling up and and one of the things was Bitcoin. So, you know, we became good friends. I remember one night he sat at my uh, kitchen table, fully explaining to me the details of exactly what he did and why uh, Bitcoin was the future. And he convinced me. So I, I, at the time, took 
half of my savings, my life savings. I was, I guess I'm too young to call it life savings. I hadn't put that much work into it, but I put half of my savings into Bitcoin at the time. It was five thousand dollars, five thousand U.S. dollars turned into Bitcoin at the price level of about eleven thousand, and that was my that was my beginning story. So I, you know, I'm up now on that. I uh, went on to go ahead and uh, as Jeb and I were friends, he 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 asked me at one point when he's building the company, started hiring people. Said Tim, I I need a leader to come and lead these young whippersnappers. May wasn't in there yet, but we had a bunch of other young whippersnappers. And I agreed, and I came, and I, I I knew I owned Bitcoin. I didn't know that much about crypto at the time, but I came, and now I'm, I'm learning more. And and even though I like to have fun and joke around, we do want this to be a very helpful show for the future for you guys. Again, like I said, even though I joked about some names will come on, we're gonna we're gonna bring people on that know crypto. We're gonna talk crypto. We're gonna talk Bitcoin, Cardano, Ethereum. We'll talk Dogecoin. We'll talk meme coins. You know, the one right now that's really hot is ApeCoin. Smay, what are your thoughts about ApeCoin? I know you and I have had some interesting conversations um, about ApeCoin. I, to be honest with you, I really don't know enough. I just know that it has to do with NFTs, um, which the thing is with NFTs that you never really know what you're going to get with those projects. There's just so much, there's so many people trying to, it's the hot item right now, right? So you're going to get a lot of people who are there just to try to make some money. Yeah. So you really have to decipher between the projects that are wanting to actually uh, do something and then the projects that are just trying to get your money and get your excitement and your investment. Um, so I, I don't want to, I don't want to put that, uh, that title on ApeCoin uh, right away cause I don't yeah. know enough about it, but it is something that I'm going to just be, have some healthy skepticism with just because just in general, a lot of these NFT projects are, are you have to really be very skeptical when you're dealing with them. So, yeah, no, I, I mean, I was actually having a conversation with someone earlier that they, they it was actually a CPA. It was Lorenzo, the CPA that uh, we use. He, he was talking about um, some of the people he's worked with. He said, obviously, early adopters have the potential to make the most money. So, uh, you know, when he's dealing with taxes and people, he said the, the, the people that have just a whole heck of a lot of crypto money are the early adopters. And um, the problem with that, obviously, is that early adoption, some coins end up panning out and some don't. Yeah. And I think it is too early. I think it's too early to really say what the success level of ApeCoin is. I, I actually, you know, as much as we like to joke, I actually love one of the things I may said to me in the conversation we had about ApeCoin. We heard it is because because ApeCoin is doing some cool things. I don't know if I'd put it on the same level as a lot of meme coins that kind of just come out as jokes uh, and then try to figure stuff out later. I do think that ApeCoin is trying to do something, but. I think sometimes people just get a little suck it, sucked in with these, oh, smart contracts, and it's a DEX, and I, which, by the way, I don't, I don't think that ApeCoin's doing all that stuff. But it, it did have a lot of fancy crypto language attached to it. And sometimes people just attach themselves, like, oh, it's going to have smart contracts. It's going to be a DEX. It's gonna do it. And it's like, well, what does that even mean? Because a lot of projects yeah. do that. Is it going to be able to compete? Is it actually going to do anything productive? Well, yeah. I mean, to speak on that, because that, that, that was one of my biggest concerns, because I've, like, I, I think the thing that I come into when I'm, when I, uh, you know, the fact that I even have a place on talking about crypto is, is because, to be honest with you, I just kind of live in this land of, like, of being a little bit skeptical of all the hype, yeah. right? I like, I'm personally a very much, like, I need to, I need to know I need to see the proof. I need to know what you're seeing a in order to be able to make the same decision that you're making. And so that's my always my biggest thing. And the questions I ask is saying, OK, uh, I don't want to take what this promise is at face value. Yeah. Uh, and so that that was the biggest thing with these with these kind of projects and altcoins and why sometimes I'm extra skeptical with things like these altcoins or these NFT projects and so on. Because they all have these kind of keywords that they they end up uh, they end up trying to throw around, like uh, some of the things that Tim just mentioned, like oh you know we offer smart contracts and we offer these and that and then the other, right? And it's like well now at this point the uh, just your volume of projects promising the exact same thing, mm. you really can't make a, an educated decision just on that promise. You have to now dig a little bit deeper. Who started this project? Yeah. What is their history? What is their you know? What is their uh, background? And then also in terms of are they are they credible into the point that they actually are, are competent developers, that they actually can develop this blockchain? Because ultimately it's it's a thing that needs to be developed just like anything else. And it's not just a magic thing. You start developing a blockchain and then you all of a sudden have a rock solid technology. It's just like anything that needs to be developed. There's there's uh, competencies that have to go into it to be able to develop something that is solid. So yeah. you always have to be able to uh, uh, 
be able to ask those deeper questions and, and to look into projects. And that's why sometimes I'm just not ready to go gung ho on something because of the promise. I want to know uh, who's behind it and what their track record is. So. Yeah, and, I, and I think that's the difference right there. Is it, so just so we, you know, like there will be a lot of people who make a lot of money on ApeCoin. First of all, anyone who got these initial offerings, that ICO when it went out. Uh, then if they're still holding, they're up, they're up, you know, but I, I think a lot of people did sell at that initial peak because it exploded. Like, I don't remember the exact number. It's thousands, though. It, you know, went up thousand percent something. And, and that's, I was listening to someone saying, that's, that's just free money. Like, you know, they, they could have cashed out, got a lot of money just getting that initial coin offering. But, uh, you know, people will make money. Traders who are really just on their game right now, and they're just, their eyes are glued to their computer. They, if they're reading the TA right and they're paying attention to what's happening in the news and they're, they're, they can make a lot of money right now. But at the same time, I think there's a lot of people who are investing based off of a promise that we have no idea if it's actually going to hold up yeah. and they're going to end up losing a lot of money. And and, and and that's the whole point. Just so you guys know, when you, people are trading, in case you guys have are new to trading, the reason people make profits in trading is because some uh, someone else bought where they took profit. So it, they people making money, it rests on other people losing money uh, when they're trading like that. And, and that's the thing is that ApeCoin, it, it could make a lot of money. Just like a, there's a lot of projects as, as Lorenzo said, he's like, you know, a lot of people make money early on in the game, but here comes a question. And I want to hear what you have to think about this May. And it might be a question I ask a lot of our guests is, you know, are you a risk? How, what's your risk tolerance? What's your risk taker? Are you wanting a safe investment? Cause that's kind of, I think, you know, I have somewhat risk, but I, I think I lean more in the boat of saying one of the reasons why I'm really big on Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and some of these bigger guys is because, don't get me wrong, I, I, there's a lot of money that could be made in some of these smaller cap altcoins, but when I'm thinking about my future investment and how I want to build wealth and I want to protect myself against not only the inflation of the U.S. dollar, but you know any other risk that comes my way, I, I, I like having the, the safer bets and I like having a surety of where my money is and understanding what I'm doing. And, and guess what? That's in crypto, we're st as, as, as much as people are trying to hear about it, we are still young in crypto adoption. There's still a lot of money to be made in Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and these bigger coins that people are more familiar with. But yes, people investing like $5 like Smay did in Dogecoin back in, what did you say, 2020? 2020, early yeah, 2020. Yeah, $5 could easily turn into uh, thousands. And so, you know, but what are your thoughts about that? What's your risk tolerance look like? Are you more of a um, safe investor? Are you more of a risk taker? What do you think? I, I to be honest with you, I, I'm kind of, I, I don't really, I don't really end up taking a lot of risks, but I'm also not too adverse to them. I, I think mm -hmm. my biggest thing is that I, I ultimately just want to know the why behind things. <laughs> and I don't even mean this in like the, because I know this gets thrown around a lot and we do talk about it even on our channel in Coffee and Crypto about the, the intrinsic why and how important that is. But I mean, more importantly, just like the, uh, just kind of like, well, what is this going to do for me if I kind of mm. take this risk? Is it, you know, what's the reward, I guess, if you will. And, you know, sometimes it's just a lot of money. And then, but the thing is, I also, I also ask, okay, what's the time commitment on this, you know? Because uh, uh, more importantly, a lot of time with these projects, it takes actually watching them. You know, it takes a lot of learning uh, and, and it, in terms of, of attention, right? Like, I, I'm going to have to sit here, say I make an investment in Doge, right? Uh, I would have had to have been uh, not only, uh, like, uh, more aware, right? Because if I, if I was more aware of where the projection of Doge, because I didn't know any of that. I just bought it because somebody told me and then... And then I actually got kind of fudded out of it because then uh, my I think it was my brother was like, oh, well, there's not a cap to the supply. So it's just it's, they're going to keep making Dogecoins or whatever. Yeah. And that to me was like, oh, well, I, you know, uh, economics 101, that's not good. So I, you know, sold my investment. Oh, I'm glad I have doubled my investment. Right. But then there was there was a lot of learning still to be done and a lot of understanding of what was going to be happening in that project. And that just that took time. Right. Yeah. So then I have to think about it like this. OK, well. Uh, yeah, I could have turned five dollars into a thousand dollars or something along those lines. Actually, I think I had like seven thousand Doge coins, and I think Doge coins all time high was like around seventy cents. So yeah, uh, I mean, I don't even know what that math is. It would have de definitely been a couple thousand dollars. Uh, actually, yeah. I think it was actually seven hundred thousand Doge coins or something like that. Well, I, um, it, but anyways, it, a large amount of Dogecoin. But my my whole point is to say this is that uh, it did. I have to think about it now. It's okay. What is my time worth in terms of thinking? All right, if I would have had to have the attention I would have had learning about Dogecoin 
that much time now break up that profit. Was that worthwhile to actually spend all that time learning about Dogecoin and making that money on it? Because it actually isn't just as simple as putting the five dollars in. Yeah. Or I would have just you know, turned it into $10 or I would have just lost all my money because I held it too long because I forgot about it, you know? So it, it, that's why my question is less about a risk thing. It's more of a time thing. And that's why sometimes, sometimes I'm not too eager to jump into straight up trading. Yeah. It's like, do I want to spend that much time watching the market and making sure I'm timing my trades and educating myself on, on these certain projects? Or do I just want to do something that's simple and say, uh, you know, I'm going to make more money just do, working my job and dollar cost averaging uh, and that's going to take less time than trying to jump into something more risky. So I mean, that's that right there. It's the time in the market beats timing the market. You know. So yeah. No, I was going to ask you: Do you have a lot of regrets regrets about taking your profit in Dogecoin and doubling your five dollars, or do you do you think it was wise at the time? What are your thoughts? I, I think it was. I, I think it it started an unhealthy habit. Actually, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I think so. For me, I ended up. Uh, I I have the tragic tale of being early to things and then being early out of things, right? <laughs> you because beat the bulls and the bears. So so to be honest with you guys, that was the first time I missed out on a giant gain was the Dogecoin. I was early to Dogecoin and then I was early out of Dogecoin. Yeah. The next one was I was I was not just early. I was really early to GameStop, and I was oh, early yeah. out of GameStop. You I put a lot of money into GameStop. And you had like a couple hundred, right? Yeah, I put a good amount of money in GameStop, and then I, I know that's funny because a couple hundred probably doesn't seem like a lot to a Dude, lot of people. Listen, but that's a lot of money. It was a lot of money, especially to see where GameStop went because I bought GameStop at fifteen. I think it was like fifteen dollars or something like that. Yeah, I bought GameStop fifteen dollars. That stock ended up going to five hundred dollars a share. Okay, yeah. so do the math on that. But I yep. would have made a lot of money. But the thing was that was sad about that too. I I actually did take profit. I sold at like $50 a share. So I made money and I was proud of that money. And then I saw it go to 500 and I was like, well, that sucks. But the worst part is I actually had got my dad in early too. I said, dad, come on, GameStop. It's going to, you know, short squeeze, blah, blah, blah. Get in, you know? So I got my dad in and then I had him sell at the same time. So he ended up losing. He, well, he profited a little bit, but like he ended up losing out on the gains too. Yeah. Now here's the tragic thing. I had an opportunity to make that wrong or right because then I was early to AMC. I was early to AMC. So then I buy in early on AMC. AMC pumps. I sell small little profit. Ends up going from like, uh, I think it was like $8 a share to close to 70 something dollars a share. Dude. <sighs> this is tragic. All right. Rough. Tragic. Then this is more tragic than rooting for the Boston Celtics. Oh yeah, thank you. You had yeah. to throw that jab in there. Yeah, got it. Next, next issue. Then I'm like, okay, now I've start working for Crypto Jeb. I'm into crypto now. This is great, uh, or at least back into crypto from my Dogecoin mistake. Uh, so I'm like, oh, let me buy some Ethereum. Well, first of all, actually, there was there was one mistake I made too. Uh, my friend told me to buy Cardano back in January of 2021. Uh, and I was wanting to do it, and I actually even started to do it. And then I set up a Kraken account and all that stuff. I was going to get it. And then I was like, uh, this is just kind of too much work. I wish it was easier to you know, buy it. So I ended up not buying it. So that was a really bad idea. I was ready to drop like $1,000 into it. And that ended up biting me in the butt because now it look where it went. <laughs> but because uh, I think it was like 10 or it was like 20 cents at the time. So, you know, that sucks. But the other uh, it, uh, horrible and sad investment I made is I actually, I bought like a whole Ethereum at the beginning of 2020. I mean, not big in, big in this 2020. This has become no. the, so the sob story of it Ethereum. Is. Th that's my, Ethereum of that's, that's, that's why I said it made a bit bad habit. I actually, wow. so I bought a whole Ethereum in yeah. 2021. Uh, and then I ended up selling that like when it went to, I ended up selling it when it went to like, not even much more actually. It was like, I, I bought it at like, 12 or th yeah like 12 and then i sold it at like 14 wow. um and then it ended up going to five <laughs> so uh, you know that is that is the story of my investments so now this, i've gotten yeah. to this point where i'm like all right Samay, if i'm going to put money in something i'm just going to stink and leave it there because yeah. yeah at the end of the day i i'm, I'm a little bit i'm a little bit uh finicky about it 
Uh, and that's why I want to say, like, if you guys think that any of us are just kind of these bulletproof investors, even when we come on the show, like, yeah. we make our own trading mistakes all the time. Oh, yeah. And so that that was, like, that was kind of my battle scars. But now I'm, I'm just a – I'm – I'm not even adverse to trading. I'm just kind of sitting in this uh, well, this season of just DCA, DCA. What, what I will say is, you know, now, because I don't know when people are listening to this, what the price of Cardano is. At the moment, it's sitting at 109, just came down for 38, uh, 318, just came down for 118. I'm back in the problem. My, my, my average input on Cardano was 102, I think. So I'm back in the green on Cardano. But that was the only investment I was in the red on. Um, I, I actually had the opposite story. I have not made too many mistakes i think but it's because jeb preached so hard and i just trust him he said tim and this is the night that he convinced me to put you know half my savings in which he didn't convince me to have my savings I, that was my decision but he convinced me to invest in bitcoin he said tim i want you to go outside imagine you take this money and you go outside you put it in a trash can you burn it on fire you're never going to see it again if it turns into a million dollars awesome if it turns to zero well you set it on fire so who cares you know and that's why i did it you know uh, there's a, there's this, there's a problem and, and Taylor, my wife struggles with this and it's it seems like you did and you're learning from it now is, uh, <laughs> is the power of hindsight. Yes. The, the, everyone looks back at hindsight and says, if we had just, Oh, if we had just done this and then, and then they try to make that decision in a future decision. It's like, well, no, you, you're learning the wrong thing. Learn from the fact of like, Hey, in hindsight, the charts move up and to the right on crypto. Yeah. So stop, stop well, playing in and out. Well, I was going to tell, there's a story. Yeah. So even the other day, so just, you know, you know, uh, when, when Smay said he put a couple hundred dollars in, in the GameStop, that's a lot of money. First of all, you were also 19 or 20 at the time. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're very young. Did you know very the average, poor. did you know the yeah. average uh, net uh, worth of a 30 year old right now is negative $10,000? Yeah. So you were ahead of the schedule. You know, a couple hundred dollars is a lot of money. To me, a couple years ago, I would say, I would say, you know, when I first got in, I was 24. Six, a couple hundred. I, I put a couple thousand in, but if I if you had told me I'd lost a couple hundred dollars, I would have been like, ugh, I can't do that. Now it's like, okay, for for where I am now with my investment and what I'm doing stuff, that that's not as much. If I lost a couple hundred, I'd be like, oh, that sucks. You know, no one wants to lose money, but um, but there's something happened the other day. You know, so Taylor and I we have some investing and we made some profit. So at the moment, just so you guys even know, strategy wise, I don't just put all money in at all times. I I do like to DCA in. I like to look for tops and bottoms. Now that I know how to read technical analysis. I like to have my good buy spots. So I have I have right now probably about thirteen thousand dollars in USD that I'm waiting to put into the market at the right time. But Taylor, of course, she she looked at Cardano's spike the other day, which rose all the way up to one eighteen. And she's like, Tim, if we had just put that money in at seventy eight cents, we would be up like five thousand dollars right now. I was like, Well, that's really easy to determine in hindsight. Yeah. But how many times, again, it's so easy to go in hindsight to smay and say, Hey man, if you just left your five dollars in on Dogecoin, you would have thousands now. But it's it's like, hey, at the time we didn't know if that peak, we didn't know if it was going to go up or not because Dogecoin is a meme coin, and 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 that's one of the that's one of the downsides of Dogecoin is yes, it's made some money, but it's so unpredictable and it's so unknown, and there's so many products like that. You can read a lot of things in hindsight, but at the time, I honestly would be like, listen, you made, you doubled your money, and yeah, it's only five dollars, but you doubled your money. That was great. Uh, and even me, like I, I'm like, okay, listen. If I had put my money into, if I had put that thirteen thousand into Cardano at seventy eight cents, great, yeah, I would have made a lot of money. But what happened if I had put thirteen thousand dollars in Cardano and then Cardano went down to fifty cents? Now my wife would be having a completely different conversation with yeah. me, where she's saying, Tim, why did you do that? You just lost a lot of money. And it's just like you got to have that that concept. You got to remember that the time in the market beats time in the market. Have your DCA strategy. That's the greatest of them all. I like to trade as well, but I definitely have my DCA strategy. So that's what Smay's learned over time. That's what he just talked about. He just said I've been burned so many times about getting in too early, out too early. Sometimes people get burned because they get in too late, out too late. I mean, people who bought that $69,000 top of Bitcoin, mm. they're learning that lesson right now. It's one of the things that eventually you're going to learn, hey, I, gotta, I just got to stop. I got to stop thinking just because I see something in hindsight that I can make a future prediction. I'm going to think about the future, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop letting my brain get in the way because I guarantee you there are people who bought Cardano there at $0.78 cents saying, hey, it might keep going down, but you know what? I like this buy spot. And they're sitting very, very happily right now with Cardano. Again, I don't know what the price currently is because this show is not live, but I do think Cardano's going to go up. Um, so, I, I, like, I would even say the the thing that I actually think is an important anecdote to take from my story, though, is the context of it. And the fact is, like, 
it's very easy to, if you looked at face value what I said, it's like, oh, he's a victim of FUD. You know, that I got fudded out of my investments several times because I thought this is the peak or, you know. But actually, to be honest with you guys, at no point, except for the Dogecoin story, that was a classic case of FUD because it was like, oh, there's no supply cap. So you're going to it's going to be worthless here soon. You know, maybe that was good advice in the future, but I could have been a very rich person with it if I would have just held on to it. Yeah. But it's not, it wasn't actually about FUD. It was about the fact that I had, I suffered from something called lifestyle inflation. Okay. Oof. This is something that I have always struggled with. I'm a very impulsive person. And this is, this is a bit, this is an important thing that I think a lot of people struggle with that is not really talked about and it's the idea of inflating your lifestyle your expenses right based on the amount you make and it's uh it's almost an idea of like you know you don't really save right you don't really save your money you you're not very frugal and i think actually a lot of times people frown on people who for being frugal and i think that's a little bit that's a little bit inappropriate you know because like <laughs> uh, to be honest with you i wish i was a little bit more frugal and that's the uh, that was the yeah. always the problem of saying I couldn't I couldn't actually uh, even though a lot of the times the investment I made uh, it, based on what I had what my income was I absolutely could have set that money on fire and been just fine right mm -hmm. the problem was I wanted to uh, live in such a comfortable lifestyle that I actually convinced myself that I couldn't afford to lose that money. And mm. so what it would what I would do the ten dollars is I would well not the ten dollars again that was a classic case okay. of fud but the other yeah. bigger investments you're I had the, you're talking about the, yeah. the uh, when we're talking GMC GameStop, GameStop AM, uh, AMC yeah. and and my Ethereum all of those were examples of me saying well I made money on it and now I want to go buy something with this money you yeah. know and, and and a lot of times it, what you know the thing is the biggest thing is not a lot a lot of the times that is it is. Um, uh, like I'll buy, you know, things with it. Sometimes it's just like I'll, I'll, I'll uh, you know, buy, I'll spend that money on food. I'll spend that money on, on experiences, hang out with my friends. Let's hang out every weekend, baby. Let's go do stuff. You know, yeah. uh, that is, I end up doing that so much with my, with my investments that it's like, you know, and I think it's just being a classic young person that you kind of have that you don't have that, that kind of foresight to, to be able to not, uh, you know, uh, not make yeah. those those impulse decisions. So yeah. when I when I especially when I'm talking about uh, lifestyle inflation, right? The biggest thing is a lot of people. Re this is a, I think this is something that is an important thing to kind of lay out there for anybody who's interested in starting trading because this might actually be your motivation for trading is to say, well, I want to make more money so I can do the X Y Z new thing. I want to buy X Y Z thing, right? Mm -hmm. The, the problem is with that is that your money then quickly comes and goes, and then you also become an extremely impatient and emotional trader, right? Um, so the thing is, when the more money you make, it shouldn't really be, unless uh, within certain margins, right? Within certain boundaries, when you make, you start to make more money, when you start to make better trades, right? Your instinct should not be to now, uh, you know, get a bigger house and buy a better car and do all these things right away. A lot of times the smarter thing to do is just to continue to reinvest that money. And that's the difference between being, uh, being just the average middle class guy and then yeah. being, uh, being a, a very wealthy person. Well, I was talking with my wife Tay about this the other day, and there's a balance point. Because, all right, how many young people, and I, we all know a young person like this. Um, most of people are probably related to a young person like this. Uh, cause I think there's, there's like one in every family. They're so excited about their youth and they do, they go and they explore the world and they do all these crazy things and, and don't get me wrong. That's cool. They'll have those memories forever, but then they have to come back to the real world and they don't have any money and they end up living on either their parents' couch or their buddy's couch. And then they have to, you know, wait tables just to be able to pay for food while they actually are trying to, to build their career, but they don't really want to go to college, yada, 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 all these things. They, they, they explore young and they don't set themselves up for a financial success in the future and the rest of their lives uh, until something changes, they end up having a lot of struggles, right? Yeah. Though the exact flip side of that is that, that kid, and we all know one of these kids, or they're now an adult, but they were that kid who they didn't want to spend money on anything. So they never had fun in life. They never did anything exciting they saved and saved and saved and pinched every penny and put it in their savings account and they retire at the age of 60 and now they can go explore the world and have fun but they're they're getting a little 
up there and, and they can't do all the things they used to do. Like if they want to try like snowboarding, all that stuff, like their, their body is just kind of broken down at that point. They can't enjoy life. So now it's like they have all this money and, and then they're, they'll tell you, I, I've met many men like this, like Tim, like I, I spent too much time working and now that I'm able to relax, I, I can't relax and have fun the way I really should have. I wish I had gone back and been a little less frugal. And so I was telling Taylor, I was like, yeah. man, well, there's that balance point of like, hey, we're, we're still young. So I'm, I'm 20. I'm, I'm on Monday. Well, this coming Monday, you guys are, this show is actually already over. March 28th. So that's probably in the past. I turned 28. I'm 28 years old. I'm no young. That's why I'm no longer a young whippersnapper. I'm an older whippersnapper. But whippersnapper is still uh, a young term. Taylor is 24. She just turned 24 the 1st of March. So, you know, we are relatively young. And I said, hey, let's let's grind. Let's get our finances up right. And then, you know, in our late 20s to mid 30s, let's go explore. Let's Let's save right now. Let's not just go and spend every dollar we have at every moment. Let's save. And then have fun like in our, our late 20s, mid 30s. Uh, and then, and then we'll continue to save for our time and we'll still have fun then, but we won't have, we won't look back with regrets on, man, I wish I had done that when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And so there definitely is that balance point. And it is, the question is, how do you strike it? And, and the thing is, listen, as much as I love crypto, there are some people who will make a living off crypto. I was talking to Lorenzo even today, and, and there's something I want to work on because my, my portfolio of crypto is, it's getting semi close to this, but, uh, he said, you know, if you had a thousand, if you had a hundred thousand dollars and you, um, uh, you uh, yield farm with it. He's like, there's places where you can get easy, you know, five thousand dollars a month of income just uh, yield farming your crypto. And I was like, holy crap! Like, I could probably start doing that. I need to start looking at that kind of stuff and making some passive income that allows me to both a have fun now, but also work. And that's the thing is like, that's yeah. passive income. But I highly recommend for people, even for their character. Like, let's say, let's say for some weird reason, you're a great trader, you do that passive income, you know, you're, whether your parents gave you money and the Lord blessed you, whatever it is, you're able to make some passive income that way, still go work, like work while we're young too. Like, let's not just say, like, I, I see so many young people who for some reason or another, they have a lot of money at their exposure, their disposal, and they, and they just stop working. And it's like, I mean, I remember my dad feeling like back in the day, he's like, man, if we had a million dollars, that would last for a couple of years. It feels like today, if I had a million dollars, that would last me like not even a full year because when you get that much money, you learn how to spend it very quickly. Exactly. And, yeah. and so it's like, man, have fun. If you have money to have fun and, and do things, great, do it. But make sure you're taking care of your future. You're working, you're saving, you're thinking about your entire life and you're thinking about the lives that come after you, your children and your children's children. And and then the other thing that a lot of people forget, and you know, Sman and I, we're, we're both very strong believers or Christians love to have fun. That's why we're so goofy, but we love Jesus. And it's like, well, okay, what else are you doing? Like, this is a gift that you were given by God. And whether it was a person that gave it to you or your parents who gave it to you or a job that gave it to you, ultimately every single thing you just did was a gift that God gave you. And, and the question is, what are you doing with it? And just so you know, the way that works, the Bible talks about it is him who stewards the money. Well, and when you're, when you're faithful with a little, He'll bless you with a lot, so that's not a prosperity gospel thing of like saying, "Hey, if you if you uh, if you do this really well, God's gonna give you a million dollars." No, there's just that's just a principle though that God he he blesses people in the way that he needs to use them, and some people that's money. And so I really do hope that when I look back on my life, and Smay, I think you hope this too, when we look back on our life, what did we what did we do with the things we were given? Mm -hmm. Were we faithful? And, uh, yeah, and that's you just, you guys know, this whole show, this, this whole show is about crypto and we're, you know, we'll talk about other things, but ultimately why am I so excited about crypto? I'm excited because a, uh, it's a way out. It's a way out from a broken financial system, but two, it's a way for me to continue to do what I really was called to do. And that is to, to preach the gospel and to, and to share the good news and disciple young people and to help them live better lives. And that would not be possible without Jesus. So, uh, you know, transitioning. We're going to transition here. Altcoin still, though. And we only have a couple more minutes here. I'm, today's show is not going to be crazy long. Smay, what's your favorite altcoin that you're looking at right now? Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be anything special, but, like, it doesn't have to be because you think it's about to explode in price. It's just you think – whether you think it's about to explode in price or whether you think the, the tools of it uh, are really cool and it's going to produce something really cool, what is your favorite altcoin? Um, that's a tough one. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's a tough one. And you know, if you guys are familiar with me and my role on the show, you would probably assume immediately that I would say Polkadot. 
And uh, if this was a, a little bit ago, I might have said Poke Dot. Uh, Poke Dot. Poke Dot. <laughs> I might have said oh, Poke Dot. I might have said Poke Dot. But to be honest with you, I, I think my heart has started to get pulled different directions now at this point. And uh, I think even in terms of that question, I, I'm actually there's a part of me that has a bit of a a bit of a a, d- a different. You know, I have a tough one with that one. Yeah. That's a tough question for me. But oh, I would you want me say to get my answer and you no, no, I, 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 oh, you have an answer. I okay. give my answer. I didn't, I didn't know if you were prepared. An answer. I give my lead into it. Okay, okay. I it's actually a long lead in. to be honest with you, my favorite altcoin right now at this moment, if you were to ask me, is actually uh, Cardano, and not yeah. because and not because of any that I th- you know this holier than thou. I am so cool because I invest in one of the cooler projects with the coolest guy, Charles. You know. It's actually just because I think it really is uh, uh, it is a pretty solid project. And I actually there's nothing that I really look at that and I say, I think this project is a, a goober project or I think it's I think it's backed up. You know, I think the people working on it are very competent people. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it makes me feel comfortable to be able to make those investments in it and dollar cost average, you know, and not try to go, you know, gung ho and not over leverage myself into it. But just you know, dollar cost average and enjoy the uh, the gains of the project. That's that's, that's my that's, that's my choice. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go a different route with my answer because I, I love Corona as well. I love Corona for many reasons, but I'm gonna go with one solely for use case. And I've said it on the show on Coffee and Crypto before, but I, I I love chilies, and the reason why is I I actually on today's show, so today's Friday the 25th, I think I don't know if you go back and watch Coffee and Crypto on the 25th, I said. Um, listen, if you if you think Chili's is going to make you a lot of money, it, it, it might. I don't know. It might. But that's not the purpose. That's not the reason why I like it whatsoever. I love what it's doing to allow sports fans to interact with their teams. And I really, really hope that it becomes big in the United States, spreading not just down. Because right now I know it's in hockey. I think UFC is done some. Although I don't understand. I'd have to look more into why the UFC uses it because – I don't know one of the cool things like in Europe, like uh, there's certain teams that if you have chilies and you have one of the fan tokens, like you can vote on like um, what uniforms they wear, what happens in the stadium. There's there's a smaller league. This is really cool. You can vote on the lineup. Now, I don't think any major sports team is going to do that because they want to make money and they want their best unit on the field. But in some of the smaller ones, you can they have so much fan engagement. You can vote on who you want to start in the game. Pretty cool. But I really would love that to come to the United States because how many, you know, couch quarterbacks are sitting out there saying if i was out there on the field I, I, this is the decision i would what is that coach thinking he's an idiot and it's like well hey you know be a part of the team's decision you know mm. it's a hard job it's a hard job out there and I, so anything that gets me as a sports fan to be more involved with my team i doubt they would ever send it to college i wish you know i'm a massive virginia tech fan go Hokies, college football which is funny because smay is a it, it, this is actually the stupidest thing smay didn't care about college football one bit until last year when I was trying to talk to him about uh, rooting, just default rooting for the Hokies. But he grew up in West Virginia, so we watched the Virginia Tech-West Virginia game, and he decides, this little stickler, decides to become a massive West Virginia fan. Uh, well, I mean... And I, now I regret even getting him into college football. Come here, I'll, to be, I'll be honest with you guys. It was kind of a no-brainer because, yeah. like you said, I did... I, well, I didn't grow up in West Virginia. My whole you family... You were born there. I was born there, my whole family there, my history. My ancestors are from there. And to be honest with you, it was actually, like, growing up, every time we visited, I was surrounded by it. Like, well, technically, I'm from Huntington, West Virginia, right? So the biggest the biggest thing from my, my mom's side... or. Yeah, a lot. I was surrounded there in the city because right there is where Marshall's campus was. So we are Marshall, the movie, you know, Marshall University is there. So there's a lot of thundering herd stuff there in where I used to visit specifically. But I remember my grandma's house is covered in Mountaineer stuff. Uh, so I actually even just had a lot of growing up. I had a lot of Mountaineers merch and stuff like that. So I, I kind of already had an appreciation for the Mountaineers, and it was kind of an easy thing for me. When Tim was, I well, found out there was a rivalry listen, there, it just made it listen, so much sweeter for long, me. Long story short, I regret ever getting you into college football. It and was it, it was a beautiful thing. I, I I think it was really meant to that's, be. Going so. back to my coin though, I don't think Chili's is ever going to get into college football. That would be nice though, but I do hope they get into like professional basketball, professional football. I, I yeah, 
Uh, if anything, Tim, just to make you feel better, as much as I love college football now because I get to uh, I get to enjoy it, our little rivalry together. Yeah. I am mostly an NBA fan, so I know. And know. You, you that's where my you that's where my team is. over there as well, the Boston Celtics. It's really not a which I have hated Boston before I even knew Smay. So it's not like I just decided the way you decided to pick a team just despite me. I don't hate Boston despite you. I've hated them for a long time. To be honest with you, though, Boston's actually like really good right now. I don't know when this podcast is going to be released, Listen, but like I like I, there's. There's a bet that Sman and I have. I don't even know if we have the conditions, but like he thinks they're going to the finals. I do not. We'll have to decide. Maybe on the next show we will know the exact details of that bet. We have a long time before we have to see if that plays out. But uh, I definitely think they're making it to yeah. the finals. Well, I I think we're going to wrap up this stream. This is the first ever, again, first ever podcast version of Between Two Coins. Make sure you look out for future episodes where we will talk all things crypto where we the way we want to. We'll talk sports. We'll talk workouts. You know, by the way, I'm going to close it out. Smay, what is your 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 workout journey? You're losing weight. What are you at right now? What's your poundage my, down? My poundage down, I have not gotten a... Uh, well, to be honest with you, I've hit a little bit of a plateau, gentlemen. I have. I, I, and ladies. Uh, uh, and ladies, yes. yes. Uh, I'm sorry to assume. But, uh, yes, I have hit a little bit of a plateau, but my, uh, cur my current weight loss i actually haven't gained any weight thankfully so yeah, i am that's sitting i am sitting at uh let's see i'm sitting at about 55 pounds lost Come um on. so and you know what's cool is that you did all that wearing yellow crocs i did all that well most sometimes of it, in sports mode most of it wearing yellow crocs most there's wearing, days that yeah. i wore different shoes but yeah. i i mostly wore yellow crocs at the gym i yeah. still wear yellow crocs at the gym uh, and I, to he be does. honest with you, I think the reason why, because I, I like, I haven't really done much of the hardcore dieting and stuff uh, as I, as I was doing, uh, which I definitely need to get back on. But the, the that's actually funny because the the most consistently inconsistent slash consistent thing that we've been doing is actually going to the gym. Yeah, we've had some weenie days that we don't do it, but yeah. for the most part, like if you zoom out, like we've had a lot of, uh, of corrections, uh, you know, we've had a lot of retracements in this journey, but the fact is up and to the right has been the, the our, our the gym right. schedule. So to be honest with you, I, I think just maintaining the, the consistency of working out has been enough to keep me on the right trajectory mm. Um, but I'm ready to uh, start grinding again. Um, so yep. it's going to be a good one. It's a good one. So well, that is all we have for you guys in this episode. If you want to follow us on other platforms, we are both on Twitter. That's where we spend a lot of time. So yes. I'm at Tim's underscore T-A. Smay is at Smay Nakamoto. Yes. Uh, make sure you guys go. You guys follow us. You guys and girls go follow us on Twitter. Also, we're on the Crypto Jeb YouTube channel. Make sure you go like, subscribe every single video you see there, and comment. And, you know, I think what we're going to do, we'll, we'll see about this in the future. We want to definitely answer questions you guys ask. So if you guys tweet at us and you put hashtag between two coins we'll try to even work out some uh fan questions in here but guys i hope you enjoy this episode and we will be back next week peace whoa whoa look at this guy he watched the entire video what a cool guy i think the next thing that he wants to do is hit the like button and then probably even subscribe to the channel and perhaps even comment down below what he thought that that would be pretty cool wow what a cool guy